and how very exciting. Hello, welcome, welcome, thrice welcome. I'm Chris Grimes and I'm the host of the Good Listening To show. In fact, I'm not just a host, I'm the author, presenter and curator of the Good Listening To show. And this is a very exciting day into a, a territory which will become familiar to us all as the programme evolves. It's called The Clearing, which is a very, very exciting energetic space where anything is possible, like a comedy improvisational yes and space anything is possible. So the clearing is going to feature quite heavily and this man too features quite heavily in my life too. For my inaugural show I can't think of a, a, a more wonderful human being who I hold in hugely high regard and he even works in high regarded places. <laughs> we'll come on to that. This is Mr Dave Stewart from the Fresh Air Leadership Company. And Yes, and you did a, a very enigmatic breaking up of your voice there on the quirks and the comedy of Zoom. <laughs> so, Dave, you're really, really welcome. Dave runs a company that's called Fresh Air Leadership. I work alongside Dave quite a lot because it's about getting outdoors with business leaders. Dave can tell us and position it much better than I'll be able to do. But uh, I was very excited when I was given this new, very exciting and salubrious gig of being a presenter on uh, UK Health Radio that I would be able to bring you first for the inaugural show. So I bid you several, several welcomes, Dave Stewart. So how, how's morale? What's your story of the day, Dave Stewart? Oh, morale is pretty good because I'm looking out at the blue sky over the, the Scottish mountains. Um, <clears throat> the story of the day is, oh, one of our dogs had an operation yesterday, so we're kind of mm. looking after him. Yes, he had a, had a spleen removed or had the spleen removed. So it's been a bit of a, a sleepless night um, and a lot of care and attention is being paid just now, okay, off camera by, by, by Mrs. S. So uh, love uh, the that's dog. the story today. And which one of your two lovely hounds are we talking about? So it's Archie, the flat coat retriever, who's our chief wellness officer, largely because he's quite a large <laughs> dog and largely because he's quite a lazy dog. <laughs> and Dave, I love you in a healthy way for bending that straight into a health regard. That's wonderful. So <laughs> we wish him, Archie, a very happy recovery. Thank you very much indeed. So I'm going to enjoy curating us through the lovely storytelling metaphors of the Good Listening To show, which first of all, we'll talk about a clearing, then there's going to be a tree within your clearing, and you were sort of born for the outdoors life, which we'll come on to, and we're going to shake your tree and let your storytelling apples fall out. That's where the exercise 54321 comes in. And by the way, why I wanted particularly to bring you in first, Dave, is because I have to say, I have to tell my new listeners, that I got that very juicy storytelling exercise from this lovely man, Dave Stewart. So I wanted to big him up for setting on the open road of uh, making this show with its core being this exercise. Then we'll talk about alchemy, gold, and something I'm gonna call diamonds beneath our feet. And then I'll give you a cake uh, via a bit of Shakespeare as well. So it's all to play for. <laughs> Brilliant. So, First of all, the clearing is this wonderfully energizing space, as I've already mentioned. But what is a clearing like, metaphorically or literally, for you, Dave Stewart of the Fresh Air Leadership Company? A clearing? Well, for me and hopefully for my clients, it's a thinking space, okay? Because we create thinking experiences for leaders and teams who are probably a bit zoomed out, to be honest, and we use amazing Scottish spaces. And the reason we do that is because you know, leaders are very busy, busy, busy taking action, action, actions, and they do a little bit of thinking before they do that. But they don't do a lot of thinking and they don't know uh, how they think. And we're here to actually create that fantastic clearing in a Scottish space to help them think, help them think better together. I love that. And we're so busy, we don't airlock between critical impact opportunities at work. So this is really about fresh air. Even the clues in the title here, the Fresh Air Leadership Company, are outdoors providing an awesome airlock. Yeah, it's really about uh, fresh thinking um, and fresh conversations and fresh action. And people sometimes need to be taken out of the mess that is their working life or rather their operational busyness to actually think about where they're taking the business. And we're taken to that clearing up in the Scottish Highlands very often, but not exclusively so. And we just help them slow down and think well. I have the great privilege of working very closely with you and I, I, I have um, labelled myself your metaphorical Sherpa with a flip chart. So <laughs> obviously I don't carry one around in my rucksack, but I've got a mindful of information. 
as a coach and then we let our thinking unfold on the great outdoors often the west highland way in our experience so far but you go to other other locations also available yeah we we place is so important uh, to the way people think uh, engage with each other and, and sort of plan for the future so we will we will we will choose a place that matches the the client brief so sometimes it could be the west highland way for example which is a, is a metaphorical and physical journey that specific clients want to go on. Other times we'll say, well, actually, why don't we sit in the boardroom of your supplier? If you want to get in the mindset of the people who are propping you up, maybe it's going to be indoors. It doesn't have to be outdoors, but place is a big choice that we make and recommend to our clients. It's not just another Bakshi hotel conference room. We think about these things. Think you do. we are doing it I've, again. And I've heard you call it <laughs> flat landscapes of the boardrooms of this land. And then we get outdoors. Hurrah. Yeah, yeah. That flat thing is really important because you, you you will know this and your and your listeners will know this is that in the old days when we went to the office, okay, you, you, you'd, you'd get your flat rail ticket, you'd sit on your flat railway seat and you'd take out your flat iPhone, others are available. You'd get to work and you'd sit at a flat boardroom table in a room with flat glass and, and guess what kind of conversations you're going to have? Flat, okay. Yes, quite <laughs> flat. And if there are yeah. any flat earthers amongst there in our listenership, because yeah. we are going global with this, if there are any flat earthers out yeah. there, yeah. they'll be surprised at the hillocks that you provide in the, in the West Highland Way and, and yeah. beyond yeah. in Scotland. Uh, uh, absolutely. I think um, creating um, choiceful space for really quality thinking is kind of what we're about. And of course, that has huge health benefits. It's not just about the cognitive side of how we are. It's really more about well, it's really about how we are and how we relate as a whole person to one another. And of course, it's not just about the brain, it's about the body. And it's that old Cartesian fallacy of we have a, a head where all the thinking happens and we have a body where all the walking happens. You know, we, we, we're actually quite holistic in our way of facilitating the stuff that we do. Can I just congratulate you for the expression Cartesian fallacy? No, thank Go you, sir. you. <laughs> it's fantastic look it up it's <laughs> yes it's awesome so i love this so far it's all tickety boo uh, yeah. so we share also um a lovely nietzsche quote which we often have bantered about which is the best ideas happen outdoors and also something i've learned from you if in doubt walk it out has been a really good strategy for me during the pandemic you know i've often felt a bit as we all have during this particular last year of our life but I, yeah. I'm really a strong advocate, as you are too, of if in doubt, walk it out. Yeah, and I think there's two things spring to mind when you say that. And I think, bounce back to one of the phrases I think you've used a lot of times, is if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. So if you do all your thinking in a, in a, in a particular place, for example, in the office or the taxi or whatever, your thinking is never kind of going to go advanced. So you need to change the place that you do your thinking at. And when we're moving in the outdoors, your, your biochemistry changes. So actually your, your mood lightens, um, you allow other thoughts to come into your head. It's, it's a far more creative and productive space. Mm. And that's, you know, it's, it's, it's about movement through amazing landscapes uh, around topics that are really interesting and compelling. Uh, and that, that, that's, that's what we love to, to, to curate, to use your word. So you've beautifully positioned us here to get some oxygen and blowing between our brain cells as I now take you to the, the we're in the clearing, we are outdoors, and I'm going to go with wherever you like in Scotland. So pick a specific location that's a favourite place for you to go to in Scotland. OK, so let's um, let's sit on the slopes of Ben Vorlick as we're heading down to the beautiful Loch Erne. So we've got mountains, we've got trees, we've got rivers and waterfalls and we've got lochs. OK, beautiful. We could almost drop the mic there. That's fantastic. <laughs> so I'm now arriving with a tree in this wonderful, beautiful, uh, yeah. quintessentially Scottish clearing. And we're going to shake your tree. So we want to get the story behind the man that is Dave Stewart. I know that you have an SAS background. I've always enjoyed the fact that you're a really wonderfully, tremendously kind man. But I enjoy the free song that you could also kill me if you had to. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cruel one. That's a cruel so, one. Yeah. So we're going to shake your tree. And so uh, five things. To, sorry, you've had five minutes. This is your exercise. I should get it right. Uh, <laughs> you've had five minutes to have thought about four things that have shaped you, three things that inspire you, two things that never fail to grab your attention. Whoa, yeah, squirrels. Yeah, and then yeah. one quirky or unusual fact about you, Dave Stewart. We couldn't possibly yeah. know until you tell us. 
So over to you on the open road. And thanks again for giving me this exercise. It is truly delicious, as our listeners will now experience. Four things that have shaped you. Okay, four things. Okay, so one, um, and I think think part of this, uh, the rules are one per decade. Okay, and that's that's really important because everyone might just say well, the, the last four things that happened to me. So the first decade, the thing that shaped me was having an idyllic upbringing in the north of Scotland. Okay, so uh, Royal D side, you know, the scenery that I've just described, uh, lots of mates, lots of playing outside. Uh, and it was just a, a sense of freedom and it sort of, you know, it just made the kind of whole outdoors, you know, part of my, my sort of formative years. Um, the second decade, I think I'm one just of the... There. It's a bit oh, like you went, whoa, whoa, you went whoa, whoa, oh, yeah. easy no, target. I just no. struck there with you going feral from an early age is what I was hearing. <laughs> feral. I think, I think it was feral from breakfast until tea time. And then you're... <laughs> you, you get a clap around the ear if you didn't turn up turn up for tea. So I, I think love that. How civilized, feral yeah. between breakfast and tea. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> in fact, even in the walks we enjoy doing together, it's very, very civilized. Because I know you've talked about yeah. what really hooked me in the early days. But oh gosh, we're going to go extreme outdoors. But you called it wine and Wi-Fi in the evenings. Hurrah. Walk, walk, walking Wi-Fi and wine, the three W's of a successful trip. All the right W's. I like you for that. <laughs> oh, sorry, I interrupted you. No, no. OK, so the second decade formative thing was uh, being in a rock band. OK, so I was a, a lead guitarist in, in a rock band in, in Aberdeen. Um, and that was just fantastic. It was like, you know, trying to emulate some sort of, you know, pop pop hero and we were actually doing it on stage with the people paying to come and see us so that was exciting so the third decade oh, was stop you there yeah, um, talking of uh, rock icons you don't happen to know mark knopfler do you oh, i taught him everything he knew <laughs> <laughs> i'm just putting it out there as this is my no, new no. show if i could possibly talk to mark knopfler i'd like you even more not just because you gave me the awesome no. 54321 exercise no no i'm afraid i don't know him but uh, good luck with that one but can yeah. you play something's a swing on your guitar uh, I perhaps could have done at one stage, okay? I mean, the great the great irony is that when you're young, you have no money, so you buy a copy of the fantastic guitars. And when you're older, um, uh, you've got enough money to buy a fantastic guitar, but you, you no longer play it as much as you did before. And am so I making this up? I'm thinking Bert Whedon. Is that the num the chap who oh, teaches that, you guitar? That, oh, that was pre-me. pre, pre -me. I, mean, I mean, I know him all, but Bert Whedon is, like, seriously <laughs> old. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, so he, he was, um, yeah, I guess he was 1950s, wasn't he, 1950s? And it's always good to insult your guests. I think you're older than me, aren't you, Dave? <laughs> I know, but I don't look as old as you. That's the good thing. <laughs> <laughs> and just quick plug for uh, your porridge, blueberries, honey and, and walnuts. OK, we are on a health show, so that's, yes. that's a oh, breakfast nice. of champions. Again, a beautiful segue. I knew you'd be a high-quality guest from the get-go. Yeah. And I think the third uh, thing was like in, I guess, my 20s was uh, joining the military. OK, so I joined the army for three years and I left 29 years later because it was so fulfilling and has given me a lot of the experiences which shaped me today. And I think one of the experiences was um, you know, a, a lot of the military service is deeply experiential. It's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 uh, it's about decision making. It's about working closely with people in teams. It's about collaboration. It's about thinking beyond you in the service of others and in the yeah. service of some higher task. And that's really shaped the way I lead and shaped yeah. the way I help people understand and look at leadership. Um, so that's three. So the fourth thing that shaped me, I think, um, generically, I've lost quite a lot of people throughout my life, okay? So either colleagues or relatives or whatever. And of course, having gone through the whole COVID thing just now, um, I've always had a, a real understanding of life being really precious. And in a sense, we're all kind of skating on thin ice. So it's about, you know, really grasping your know, what you can. Carpe diem really is, is, is what that's all about. So that's my fourth thing. Carpe yes. diem. Yeah. So. And if I may, you don't have to talk about this, but I know UK Health Radio is the, uh, um, the most phenomenal resource for all things health. Mm. Do you mind me mentioning that I know that I happen to know that you you have uh, had your own journey with diabetes during your life? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, so I, I, I'm, I'm type one or insulin controlled diabetic and mm. um, I became a diabetic um, to 1997. So that's quite a long time ago. So that's 20, 23, 24 years ago. And funnily enough, I didn't mention that as one of the things that shaped me because it sort of came along. Uh, I've sort of coped with it, adapted it. It hasn't got in the way of, of doing all the outdoor stuff I do. Um, so it those things. So 
I guess a message to anybody who is newly diagnosed is it can appear a bit of a hiccup, but actually it's, it's a very livable um, condition uh, for, for most people. That's such a profound lens to call it a mm. bit of a hiccup, because of course it's pretty seismic when it happens, but I love yeah. the, the very pragmatic, I mean, I've experienced you being, you know, in all the right ways, very bish bash bosh about how you deal with it. Yeah, yeah, well, well thank you for that. And I think, um, I guess when you've lived quite a full life, which I, I, I claim to have lived, um, you very, at some point you realize, well, actually um, life ain't a smooth road, thank heavens, because that would be really dull. But the way to cope with hiccups is actually to say, oh, OK, um, uh, plot twist, <laughs> read on. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. to your wonderful point that you yeah. have taught me, it's not how you fall over. It's how you f it's, it's how you fall upwards. And we yeah. may well come on to that. OK, brilliant. So that's that's the four things that shape me. So yeah. what, what's the rest of it? Three things that um, inspire um, you. Oh, right. Three things that inspire me. I think uh, big open views in, in sort of. It used to be mountain landscapes, but actually any landscape, you know, you know, but it has to be a natural landscape. So that 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 really inspires me. Brilliant conversations. You know, I, I'm I'm not some sort of a wild hermit. I I I absolutely need people, and I love the the kind of conversations you and I have, Chris. And I think having rich conversations with a lot of honesty and trust between the parties is is wholly inspiring. It, you 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 discover and create new stuff when you have a great conversation. And the third thing that I find inspiring is, I think, the performing arts. So just seeing a, a choir operate or people in a play, uh, you know, so, you know, you know, you know, line of duty on TV, how those things are put together, create that amazing outcome. I just, I just, I just love thinking about the outcome, but I also love thinking about what lies beneath the bonnet. How did they do that? Yes. So th have that you ever seen any huge... good comedy improvisation that you might have liked? Oh, um, the, the, someone did mention uh, somebody called Instant Wit. Um, <laughs> and they're, they're, they're very good, actually. Can, <laughs> how, how big a plug do you want? No, that no, no, absolutely I'm, I'm brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think, I think, I mean, the thing that underpins that is, is the whole spirit of creativity and the people coming together letting go to let come in a way and and yeah. drop their fear and just go for it and i think uh, that i really applaud that kind of it's it's you know, we've talked about this before chris a lot of people in fresh air leadership come from high consequence backgrounds so murder detectives ever summiteers special forces and you and some people say well wh wh why have you got improvisation performer and i said well actually being an improvisation performer takes courage it takes creativity it takes all those sort of things that we want um, our clients to explore and perhaps learn from so uh, creativity just just amazes me i wish i was more creative and i think that's perhaps the the, the driver <laughs> and i love the idea of also surrounding yourself i'm not talking about myself here but d d your genuine desire to surround yourself with awesome people and your clients and the mindset of yes and and the rhythm of walking towards something and you mm. use topography beautifully in what we've done and the devil's yeah. staircase is a place i love ascending with you <laughs> <laughs> it's the yeah, devil's staircase is great isn't it because it has such a big name doesn't it yeah but actually it's, don't tell you your listeners but it's actually a very doable hill isn't it so don't, yes. don't, don't tell too many people but uh but yes the, the use of landscape is you know we we, we 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 are creative in what we do for our clients so it's not just go for a walk we will think about the route uh we will we will encourage divergent thinking perhaps when we're going uphill to a vantage point and then if it's convergent thinking required to make a decision or refine a plan we, we will take them through narrow forest rides for example so yeah. we, we're quite clever about how we use the landscape absolutely there's a lovely resonance also just in storytelling metaphors of a journey which is you know partly what we're doing here which is lovely yeah 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 and i think actually on that one the, the, you know when we're on a trek you know and and i want people to understand when we say a trek we're, we're not talking about um you know big big sort of frightening expeditions it's all very doable but the, the great thing about a trek or people walking together over multiple hours is it's a bit like a cocktail party you can join in a conversation but if you're getting a bit bored or a bit shy you can then move away so that it, there's that kind of natural rhythm of engaging disengaging re-engaging and disengaging as your energy and your curiosity um you know moves you um 
so, so, so I think rhythm is, is a great word. I'm going to take that one. Thank you. I like it. You're welcome. So back to your tree, which we're still shaking. Yeah, yeah. So we've done we've done the three things that. Um, now it's it's two inspire. things borrowed from the film up. Uh, two things that never fail to grab your attention. Oh, squirrels! So what are Dave Stewart's squirrels? <laughs> oh, right. So one is, I want. I love it when people come to me and say, "Look, uh, we're thinking of doing this thing. Can you help us?" think a way through it so I, I, it's the invitation to be part of a creative process so everything we do is bespoke so clients will come to us and say this is the kind of thing we want to do and i just love getting engaged with them and say well what is exactly you want to do how can we do this what about this what about that so we're, we're almost creating a an event well we are creating an event you know collaboratively so i love that collaborative uh, creativity so that that's absolutely uh, one thing that grabs my attention um the other thing that grabs my attention is just looking out my window just now, looking at the beautiful scenery, and there's a kind of spiritual aspect to nature that's saying, "Come and walk with me." And uh, so, so it, it is. Isn't it? I mean, it's, summoning. Yeah, yeah, and and so, so so I see kind of I don't see nature as some sort of woo woo thing, but I but I see the outdoors as a place where I can. Um, move because I'm, I'm I'm capable of doing that and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. But as I said before, my whole biochemistry and and, and my my senses uh, become come alive. So it's it's a place of great uh, nourishment, I guess. And I think uh, I, I really value that. And you're based uh, in Scotland, I, I know, quite close to Glen Eagles, very famously, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. And when I met you, you were living in a, a, a much flatter landscape. And, and I mean, no disrespect to this place, but it's a place called Bradley Stoke, close to Bristol, because you were working towards mm. the end of your military career yeah. up in Filton, weren't you, I believe? That's right. Yeah. So we, we, we I mean, I, I am Scottish. So we've been spending, oh, I guess, about 10, 15 years before we moved back here, working out where we would like to, to settle. Because that's, you know, it's a big decision, because this is probably our kind of final final venue as it were um so we, we spent a lot of time just working out exactly what it was we wanted and that was an interesting process well very shrewdly delivered because during i know during this past you know rather testing year on your doorstep you've had all the wonderful topography that you could have oh. your heart could have desired i'm assuming for yeah, you to go yeah. feral again from from breakfast <laughs> to time. yeah and, and, and the, you you mentioned the word heart there and that's really interesting because i've always when i've driven north the minute i i cross into scotland there's, there's my heart skips there's something about a, a real sense of coming home and, and everyone will have their magic places so for me it's always been in Scotland so um, you know coming back here has been been sort of you know really fulfilling and of course during this dreadful last year we, we've had this right on the doorstep so literally we step out the door into trees woods hills and we, we're, we're very very fortunate absolutely wonderful and now we're on to uh, one quirky or unusual fact about you Dave Stewart we couldn't know oh, until you okay. tell us well, the, 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 <laughs> there was the occasion when I was uh, in the military when we were um, preparing for something and part of this preparation involved parachuting out of perfectly serviceable aircraft in, 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 in frogman suits because we were going to, you know, parachute. Into as you do. As you do. <laughs> Very, it's, it's, it's exactly like the milk tray advert, okay? So people in black uh, jumping out of airplanes, frogman suit, aiming for the sea, except in this occasion... Um, the, 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 the flight obviously got things slightly wrong and you know, four of us ended up um, landing on the beach. Um, but this was Studland Beach uh, in Dorset, which is a well-known kind of nudist colony. Uh, and there were, there were a number of parties involved who were very surprised to see us. And of course, we were very surprised to see them because we should have been in the Ogin, you know, about two miles away. So and you were slightly overdressed, if I may say, as well, when you arrived. Overdressed, but we were in a sort of rubber, so it's, it's quite nice acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> See what you're doing there. <laughs> See what you're doing there. Yeah, so, so I think that I think a lot of people wouldn't know that, but it was it was quite it was quite a, a memorable moment. So there we are. That is fantastic. And how far off course are we talking? Oh, it's only about a mile. It's only oh, about a mile. Yeah, yeah. only I mean, about a mile. But you, yes, yes so. but, but significant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and should we say memorable in inverted commas as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant.
do we get the second thing that never fails to grab your attention? I'm just checking in on my own structure. Yes. Um, the second thing was um, about uh, nature calling me and, and going out and sort of you know, bathing in the wonderfulness of the outdoors. And then what was the first thing then? It's all about listening. I'm getting that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first one was um, being in, invited into a creative process. Uh, and this is how we usually uh, enjoy working with the clients that we work with. Uh, apologies, that's my bad listening. So I can, I can sort of blame no, you. No, sorry. So I can say, shut your face. It's time to move on now. <laughs> so yeah. we have shaken your tree, Dave Stewart. So yeah. now we stay in the clearing, but we move away yeah. from the tree. And now we're going to talk about alchemy and gold. Ooh, mm. Get me. And I'm yeah. also of late rather deliciously calling this the diamonds beneath our feet. And okay. there's a wonderful apocryphal story. Um, which I'll, I'll riff on during the course of the series, but the diamonds beneath your feet. When you are at purpose and in flow, Dave Stewart, and by the way, you've been giving me and us, our listenership, Alchemy and Gold by the bucket load. But, but what would you say is when you are at purpose and in flow, what is the alchemy and the gold that Dave Stewart, through your illustrious, you know, the choices that you've made, the locations that you've been, you know, what would you like to reveal? Um, what you mean? What, what impact do I have on the world? So, what do you so most I, uh, enjoy bringing? Is what you define with your beautiful hindsight of your longevity, your wisdom. What's yeah. the alchemy and gold well, you love to reveal? I'll, 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 I'll give you this based on what I think, but also I will give you it based on what people who worked with me um, forty years ago have started talking about on Facebook, and this is fascinating. It's almost like okay. getting a. Uh, 360 degree report from colleagues 40 years ago but anyway the common theme is I think my gift as it were is encouragement so en hyphen courage okay so it's about giving people courage um, to step out you know to make a, a bigger step or or change and I think um, I've had it fed back that I I create a sense of um, not safety but but it but yes a, a sense that it's safe to go and do something that's um perhaps courageous. not safe <laughs> yeah. courageous and and the, the facebook reference is that you know people are now bubbling around facebook have been for for 10 years but you know there's been a, like a, a facebook group of people i worked with when i was 22 23 24 and of course they're posting photographs of various people and of course my photograph comes up and of course there's a no gulp moment everybody gets to say what, what do you think about this this guy yeah and it, Again, it's been that sense of giving people permission and, 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 and sort of lifting them up. So it's not something I've, 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 I've trained for or planned, but it's somehow, I guess, a bit of my aura that rubs off on other people. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that gift and I'm super grateful that people have... have and there's a beautiful oh, quality of yeah. reciprocity there, which is one of my favourite yeah. words, which is that what you give out in life, you'll get back. So I love the fact yeah. that you're getting accolades or just noticings you know people noticing you from 40 years ago yeah appreciate so, so, you. yeah absolutely so i mean if that's a gift that people would like to um experience and obviously a, a slight plug here is is that um you know get in touch with with me or indeed you chris because that's the sort of thing we we help people with is actually we help them move forward with the challenges or opportunities that they they have or maybe don't know they have yet so we, we kind of help open doors for people in a sense so encouragement which is such a lovely yeah, word yeah, and you said yeah. that you're going to tell us what people have said but then also what you have learned as well 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 i mean that that, that was my kind of combined response i mean that that's what i've i've sensed but it it somehow was then given um affirmation when these facebook groups uh, started to um bubble yes. around and, and i thought oh my gosh that's just how, how you know I, that's how i see myself and it was it was noticed by people 40 years ago at a time when perhaps i wasn't at my most self-aware yes um, and, and it was just a nice sort of continuity of of something that i guess defines me and a lifelong resonance gosh get you Get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, you've reminded me of, um, you know, the author of 100 Years of Solitude, I think, and forgive me if I get this right, it's Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Okay. And he died and left a final statement to the world, which echoes not about you, but he said, I'll tell the world as I leave, because I think he was going off rather sadly to die of pancreatic cancer, but he knew he was going to die. And he wrote two things. And he said, I'll tell you what I've learned. I'll tell you what I've noticed and what I've learned. 
And what he said was, I've noticed that everybody wants to live atop the mountain. But what I've learned is that life is not the living atop the mountain. It's the journey towards the summit. Mm. And in sharing that with you, it's about your wonderful use of topography, as I've already said, as we you know, you use metaphor of landscapes, as you've mm. just said, to pull people towards their future and help them make new choices. Yeah, and I, and I think maybe a sort of capping thing I would say is that in the moving through landscapes and the, the stuff that you and I do, Chris, um, we're taking business leaders from a place of where they use their, their heads all the time and we're putting them into spaces where actually their emotions and their spirit are awakened and, and they then get to think with their hearts and their spirit in a way that they haven't thought or um, acted back in the workplace. So we, we were almost getting them to meet their whole selves. Yes, in a often, holistic way. Yeah. Often for the first time. And yes. they, 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 they get that sense of awe from the landscape, but they also discover a lot of awesomeness about themselves. Yes. Uh, and then they can bring a bigger, better self at, as a leader back in, back in the workplace. Oh, yes. The word awesomeness is brilliant. Although it's often used as sort of a, a, a capital, mm. really good statement, but the world of, yeah. of awe, you know, and in landscapes yeah. and the world of, you know, just yeah. awe for the, for the yeah. beauty of nature. Yeah. And I think from, from, a, from, a, from a health point of view is that if you can sort of really join up the dots around who you are um, and the impact you have you know, your aura that you have with those around you, um, that leads to a sense of, um, you know, it, sends, it, it settles you more. And I think you become uh, more effective in the roles that you have. You become more human. And of course, some of our clients, as you know, uh, Chris, discover that they're actually in the wrong place, okay? Yes. Um, and that's, that's as powerful a health tonic as, as, as being satisfied that you are in the right place because if you're in the wrong place you need to, to go somewhere differently and of course that reminds yeah. me also that you remember that hr joke about oh what if we coach our people and they leave and then the punchline is well, what if we don't coach them and they stay <laughs> yes exactly so, <laughs> yeah so there we go and there's also a great pragmatism in how i experience you as well and i know your catchphrase which i really enjoyed when you first use it when you said we're not woo woo but you've talked about you know, returning to Scotland and your heart skipping a beat, which I would say was a bit of a soul chime. You, know, you just know where you belong. Mm. Yeah, and, and I think you, you, you'll have seen the way we operate. We, we, we don't ram nature down our clients' throats. You know, we, we don't position ourselves as, as tree-hugging, woo-woo, um, <laughs> sort of. And, and, and I say that quite harshly to differentiate who we are, not to disrespect people who do hug trees. But we just take people to places and spaces and let the spaces and places um, talk to the individuals or vice versa. You know, we, we just move them to a different place yeah. and we keep them safe. We, we give them some great questions to think about and they come out in the far end having drawn what they need from us and the environment and the guests we bring along and the processes we use. So it's a smorgasbord of stuff we give them. By the way, you, <laughs> need, you need to write all that stuff down. That was awesome, what you just said. That's <laughs> going to be a great transcript right there. Thank you. Thank and I know you. that we do share an appreciation of trees in all seriousness, even in this programme. Uh, you know, in a clearing is a tree, <laughs> and you and me get me. But when yeah. I was first telling you and riffing on my idea, we did a bit of exchanging of look at that awesome tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, did I did I did, did I say yes? It's an awesome tree. My dogs would love to pee on it or something like that. You know, <laughs> you know me, me, metaphors can can work in different ways, can they? <laughs> it can, but also you know, if it's good enough for your dog to wee on, it's a great tree because I know dogs can be quite discerning, <laughs> or maybe they can't. Indeed, indeed. So your alchemy and gold is lovely. Uh, now we're going to award you with a cake, uh, Dave Stewart, which is uh, for gracing us with your presence here in the Good Listening Show uh, clearing. Uh, so the cake is now another final delicious metaphor that's quite complex, you know, even your 5 4 3 to one exercise. Again, thank you for giving me that. Um, it's an invitation to go deep. So your cherry is going to take the form of what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? What notes or advice might you give to a younger version of yourself? The legacy of the conversation and also, if I may, an invitation 
to talk about legacy as well. We're going to, this is where the Shakespeare comes in that I've been promising. Yeah. And I've been very inspired by Jake Reeves from As You Like It and all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players and each man in his time plays many parts, his act being seven ages. How Dave Stewart, and forgive me for this being a multiple question, it's sort of deliberate so you can go where you like. <laughs> yeah. But how Dave Stewart, fresh elegy, would you most like to be remembered? I think back to what I said earlier on was uh, someone who um, gave encouragement to others. Uh, it's, it's as simple and as um, deep as that, okay? Because uh, we all need a bit of help on our journey. And sometimes um, having a guiding hand or someone to help you know, act as your back or someone to launch you forth is, is, is exactly what we all need. So I think, I think I am that and have been that for, for, for people. So that, that's my, my legacy. Someone who's given energy and hope to people. Love that. Just liking silence there to let that hang there. The, I've got some other bits. I mean, a bit of advice someone gave me, because that was your first question, was um, when I was leading a big organisation, about 700 people <clears throat> uh, in, in challenging circumstances, um, and you are you know, the guy who's, who's running it, someone once said to me, says, Dave, don't worry, because things are never as good as you think they are. OK, so that's the humble bit but equally they're never as bad as you think they are. Okay, so don't be disheartened. So there's something about uh, keeping grounded, but being encouraged to keep on going. And I think that's a, a really important piece of advice. Oh, and if and I may, could I invite you to riff on your wonderful construct of falling upwards about your adaptation to resilience? Yeah, so, so we're always gonna get um, um, knocked down. Okay, fact, okay. So uh, I talked about diabetes earlier on. Um, and it's all about um, seeing failure or hiccups as an opportunity for learning, okay? So it's about, okay, wow, I've just learned a big lesson, okay? Uh, but I'm gonna take that lesson and I'm gonna step up or, or do something with it. Um, and this is all about the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. And it, it's, the, it's the acceptance that in failure lies growth, okay? And if you lead a, a life where you've had no challenges, had only successes, and you've basically had a, a motorway of smooth tarmac, you are, um, you're, you're just losing out what life gives you. So um, I think, you know, treat all the potholes and all the, <laughs> the no entry signs as places of learning. What a dreadful mixed metaphor. But you know, no, you I, know, I, you know I, what I mean? It's all over that. That was fantastic. I love the sort of tarmac, the smooth tarmac road. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of what something Billy Connolly said, which said that, you know, if, if he's got a pot of money and he works for the council, is he going to spend all his money fixing the potholes outside his street? Or is he going to use the money to build a, a road that's going to go further and further over the hills and beyond? So it's, it's the idea of there'll always be blemishes, there'll always be potholes. But, you know, aren't you going to go on an adventure and travel? Or are you just going to focus on the, the potholes outside your front door? Lovely. There we go. Gorgeous stuff. And Bobby, we're timing this absolutely beautifully for our inaugural show here on the Good Listening To show. And in fact, I'm... Um, before we get to the final, final, how you'd like to leave us as well, um, I've come up with a new uh, construct, which is um, comically, it was observing that Anthony Hopkins uh, is uh, up for a, a, another Oscar, a wonderful actor who I w once met actually, and said something as pathetic and lame as a young actor as, you know, I've seen all your films or something like that, because I was just really uh, in awe of him. But yeah. borrowed from the Hannibal Lecter construct, uh, who would you most like for dinner, Dave Stewart? I don't mean to scoff them. <laughs> but if you could, if you, in all your life, who would you most like, alive or dead, who would you most like to have dinner with? Well, I'd like to have dinner with my dad. So he's been dead now for ooh, 50 years. Okay, so he, he left when I was a, a kid. So it'd be nice just to have a catch up. I think that'd be brilliant. <laughs> That's lovely. And what would you like to say to him, do you think? What's the most important oh, thing? Oh, um, thank him for the 14 years we had. Um, Apologise for being a bit of an um, unappreciative young teenager. Um, and um, 
yeah, in a sense, seek validation for, for what I've done since then, because he was obviously a big influence in, in, in my early, early, uh, early life. So. And gosh, you only had 14 years together. That's really mm. profound. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you'd be top, top of the list. And you, you'd be there too, Chris. But <laughs> <laughs> I'd be your waiter, your dumb waiter. <laughs> up into play there. That's such a lovely answer. So um, there is a comedy improvisation language, which is if you can't top it, stop it. I'm just resisting stopping right there in that. I want you now to just, is there anything else as this has been your moment in the sunshine, Dave Stewart? And, you know, I have a sincere admiration for you as being a bit of a life mentor to me. Mm. And, you know, you've been very helpful during this pandemic period as well. And I know I've said it, but you have absolutely given me the, the sort of golden nugget within this construct with your, where did you find out about the 54321 exercise yourself? I think if I it was a derivation of a um, a lifeline exercise that a chap called Patrick Lencioni um, created for I think one of his books and it's about how how if people revisit what they've done during their life you know they, I think there's a graph of time versus um, highs and lows so yeah. his idea was to draw the sort of oscillating graph and then ask yourself well what does that mean. And I've always had a thing about uh, psychometric tests. I think quite a lot of them uh, waste money, waste time, and um, don't get to the heart of it. So I thought, well, actually, how can I create a psychometric inside a lifeline? So it's all the idea about your what drives you, so the interests and passions, uh, how, how do people get your attention? So it's about how are you as a receiver? Uh, and then the formative years are the you know, come from the lifeline exercise, yes. but recognizing that it's not just our early years, it's, it's how we build on those going forward. So, and then the one thing that um, people you know, could never guess about is, is the thought that actually we go to work, but we never are allowed to tell our story. And the whole four, three, two, one thing is actually me telling you who I am and yeah. how I have come to be. Uh, and that's the shame of the, the workplace, the pre-COVID workplace. People turned up and behaved as job specs. They didn't, yes. didn't turn up as people. And 4321 allows people for the first time to say, this is who I am. Please yeah. meet you. And some of my happiest early memories of our working together was we'd arrive at the complex ready to start four days of walking, one, you know, one about yeah. seven yeah. hours of walking a day. But we'd always go on day one out to, and it was quite an, uh, um, an iconic rock Yes, which of itself rock. becomes really yeah. memorable because everyone starts to share this exercise to realise, mm. blimey, this is an invitation to go deep and it's really lovely. Yeah, mm. yeah the talk rock, we called it, didn't we? <laughs> we did. <laughs> and finally then, um, where can we find out more about Dave Stewart from the Fresh Air Leadership uh, Company on the internet? Okay, so we are called the Fresh Air Leadership Company and that's the name of our website. So... Um, you'll find us at freshairleadership.com. Simple as that. And you are a man after my own heart in that when I first got in touch with you, I'd been to the Lake District of my own volition. I don't know if you remember this, to sort of think yeah, about yeah, my yeah. new website, Second Curve. Yeah. And I just happened to come across your profile on LinkedIn where you, you'd uploaded a film of you in Scotland with a big stag in the background, you know, just <laughs> wafting around. And I, I just pressed like and then sent a half intelligent connection. Oh, I've just done that email. But within 40 minutes, you replied saying, oh, you're in Bristol, me too, let's meet. And then you became in my career path, like a, a window with a really lubricated hinge as a window of opportunity, because we, we connected very, very quickly. And then before I knew it, you invited me to be your uh, sort of Sherpa with a flip chart, which again, I, I thank so, you for. So you're a Sherpa with a flip chart and I'm a, a window with a lubricated hinge. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and may your, your hinges be well lubricated in perpetuity, Mr. Davis. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So uh, uh, finally, your moment in the sunshine. Is there anything else you'd like to say? No, I think that's, that's um, a very... Fabulous conversation. Thank you for um, you know, steering it, Chris, because I've always enjoyed uh, the quality of your questions and the, the riff that we, we have together. But uh, no, I just, I just hope your listeners get, get a lot of value out of this. And of course, get in touch if, if, if I can help in any way and be someone that encourages you to maybe go forward in a different way. Be delighted. Wonderful. And, and by the way, I was really, really profoundly struck with your desire to have a, a final dinner with your father. And if, if I'm allowed to bring my own guest, I'd bring Stan Laurel along. So it'd be quite a nice evening, I think. 
<laughs> yeah, it could be, could be could be fun. Could be fun. So, Dave Stewart, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. And sincerely, again, thank you for being uh, here on my inaugural show. I couldn't think of a better person. As soon as I got the wonderful opportunity, I thought, ah, oh, I'll ask Dave. And so what goes around comes around. You're awesome. This has been uh, the uh, Fresh Air Leadership Company. And this has been, I've almost forgotten the name of the show I'm doing because I'm so struck with it's time for the end. But anyway, thank you so much. Um, I'll stop recording you here and then I'll just do my own outro for the show. But thank you very much indeed. Sure. Dave Stewart, see you soon. Thank you. And good night. <laughs>